Hello everyone. Today I'm gonna talk about the T72B, T90 and T90A armor. The T72B was first introduced in 1984, 1985 as the major improvement for the T72 series. Improvements include engine, fire control, inclu including laser guidance uh, system 9K120 sphere for 9M119 gun launch at 80 GMs. In terms of armor improvements, the armor was completely revised. As we can see on these images, the turret casting is of a new type. Instead of casting steel around special armor insert, inserts made from quartz for turret frontal protection, turret was cast with empty cavities for special armor inserts. This was made for several reasons. First reason was that the old turrets of the T64, T64A, T64B, T72A and, it, and its export variant T72M1 as well as the TADB were all cast around special armor inserts. This was relatively quick and cheap manufacturing method. However, downside of this method is that once manufactured the turret can't have upgraded its armor because it is not modular. Also such turrets can't have their armor repaired because special armor uh, insert can't be removed. Any attempts at removing and replacing special armor inserts will end with serious structural damage to the turret shell. The T72B as well as T8U and T8UD have a new turrets where this problem was solved. As I mentioned, turret is cast with empty cavities. You can see them here on the photo. After turret shell cools down, special armor modules are inserted into the cavities and they are welded shut with steel plates. Here we can see an article based on the US research made on the T-72Bs. The special armor used in the T-72B turret is nothing else than NERA, or non-energetic reactive armor, similar in design to early NATO special armors developed within British Burlington program and US Starflower program. The difference is that NATO NERA is bidirectional, which means that the steel plates within the NERA array moves forward and backwards during penetration process. However, we can't exclude possibility that NERA design within NATO changed over time. The Soviet NERA used in T-72B is moving only in a single direction. We can see that each single NERA layer is made from three smaller layers. These layers consist of 21mm thick steel faceplate, 6mm thick reactive layer made from rubber, and 3mm thick steel plate. This 3mm steel plate is the one that moves. At the moment we can be almost 100% certain the turret armor array was not changed, during the, uh, changed in design during course of the production. Here you can see the NERA arrays in the turret. And here is the color photo. In case of the hull of the tank, we can assume that there are four armor layouts. In the image you can see five, however disregard the second one from the top. The transitional late production variants of the T-72A and early T-72B, sometimes called T-72B model 1984, used a simple spaced steel plates array in the whole front. You can see that simple array on the top of the drawing. The most popular T-72B model 1985 
used similar, however, revised armor array for the whole front. Uh, on the image, this is the second one from the bottom. As we can see on drawing, it consists of main face plate, then two thinner plates, two thicker plates, and the main back plate with air gaps between them. The last variant of the whole armor, you can see it on the image on the bottom, is a similar one directional Nera array to the turret armor. However, tanks with such armor are probably rare, with vehicles named T 72B model 1989 and also T 90 and perhaps T 90A tanks also using the same armor array variant for the whole front. Now let's look at the evidence. Here we have a photo showing destroyed T-72 tanks in Chechnya. These might be late production T-72As or early production T-72Bs. We can see variant 1 of the whole front armor array. So we can see steel plates with air gaps between them. Here we can see variant number 2 which seems to be the most popular armor array for T-72B tanks. So again, you can see uh, steel armor pla plates with air gaps between them, and there are two thinner plates and two thicker plates. Here we can see it again on the production line. And here more interesting photos of the T-72B tanks damaged with their idler wheels tear off uh, the hull, exposing front hull armor. The first vehicle is T-72B model 9085. So again, we can see exactly the same armor array. On the second photo, we can see the T-72B3 model 2012. As we can see, the T-72B3 are made mostly from T-72B model 1985 tanks, as these were the most popular and the main armor was not upgraded. Here we have a photo of what seems to be the rare variant number 3 armor array for the whole front, used in late production T-72Bs and also in T-90s. However, the fact is that T-72B armor is relatively simplistic in design and was not upgraded significantly or in fact at all. The only upgrades these vehicles receive is installation of explosive reactive armor. Mostly these days a second generation ERA Contact 5, which in itself can be today considered as obsolete against modern armor piercing munitions. On the photo we can see T-72B model 1989. Here we can see T-72B3. In terms of armor protection upgrades, it looks exactly the same as T-72B model 9089. The T-90 tanks are interesting, because in fact the hull and the turret are exactly the same as in T-72B. We can be almost certain in 100% that T90 mine special armor is exactly the same as in case of T72B and it's also reinforced, reinforced with Contact 5 ERA. Why is that? Well, we need to remember that the T90 was introduced into service in the early 1990s after the collapse of the Soviet Union. 
the Russian Federation have a huge economic problems back then. The T90 during development was codenamed Object 188 and was a cheaper, simpler alternative to a much more advanced Object 187. Because of that fact, the decision was made to give a green light for the Object 188 to become the new tank, the T90. In essence, T90 is a T72B on steroids that received mostly upgrades in fire control system. Russia simply adapted the fire control system from TADU and TADUD tanks, the 1A45 into 1A45T, or IRTISH. Also, T90's uh, tank commander received a newer cupola based on 1S29 cupola from TADUD. This cupola design is superior to T72 series cupola. It's fully stabilized and have a remotely controlled machine gun, as well as much better optics. In early 2000s, a new T90A emerged. It uses a new turret welded from rolled plates. In itself, such turret will offer greater protection, as on average, uh, rolled plates have from 5 to 15 percent greater protection than their cast equivalent. Sometimes this difference might be 20 or more percent in extreme cases in favor of rolled plates. However, as far we know, and this is image from UK BTM Design Bureau designing tanks within the Ural Wagon Zavod plant that the turret armor of T90A is probably still an ERA very similar to the one in older T72Bs and T90s. Well, we can assume that this uh, because officially at least uh, there was no requirement for higher protection levels. But then one uh, can ask a question. Why Russians switched to weld the turret? The answer is simple. Production lines for cast turrets were simply closed. So without expensive investment, they could not be reopened. While welded turrets can be today produced much more easily and can probably use production lines used for manufacturing different structures, like tank holes that are made from welded rolled plates. As a side note, the T98 welded turret is based on mentioned earlier Object 187 turret, which was based in itself on Ni Stali, universal welded turret design for Soviet tanks developed in the 1980s. I will not speak about protection levels, as they are classified mostly. Here you can see how probably T90A uh, turret armor array looks like. However, T72B tanks were obtained by NATO members like United States and were extensively tested after the collapse of the Soviet Union. Knowing protection levels of the T72B, we can be pretty sure that NATO knows more or less the protection levels of the T90 and perhaps also T90A tanks. The newest T90M, however, is a completely different story, and we can't exclude that it uses a completely new special armor array. Okay, so this will be all, folks. Uh, I hope you will like that video, and th this video also explains some things. Uh, and made uh, it more clearer what type of armor uh, most of the Russian tanks today use. Okay, so I will catch you later. See ya.